think your tap water is hard? Well, get a load of mine, people. Bam! 320 ppms. Normally, these ppms indicate hard water. Growers living in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Phoenix, Arizona, or northern Texas will know exactly what this is all about already. Similarly, any British hydro chaps growing around London, Norwich, the scariest of all, Wolverhampton, have to deal with hard water issues, too. Just look at these poor little pepper seedlings that I started a while back. They're only really wanting a super mild nutrient solution of, say, 400 ppms, but my tap water, as we've just seen, is already at 320 ppms. This, my friends, is the hard water grower's dilemma. Do I reduce my feed to a pitiful 80 ppms or ignore the hard water and shoot for 720 ppms instead? I did the latter, and those taco shells are the result of too much CalMag, horribly overfed. You see, hard water problems can hit you where it hurts right from the get-go. If your water measures 120 ppms or more, chances are you have hard water. Any commercial hydroponic grower will tell you the same thing. The lower your initial ppms, the better. After all, water is the transporter of mineral elements into your plants. Thinking of it like taking a long journey on a Greyhound bus. I mean, who wants to jump on board and discover that most of the seats are taken already by, you know, those weird, unsavory types? <clears throat> In order for hydroponic nutrients to enter your plants, they must be fully dissolved. So hard water effectively bottlenecks how much you can feed your plants by taking up those valuable seeds. Now, because my water is so very, very hard, I've taken the additional step of installing a separate pre-softener for all my home's water. A pre-water softener allows the RO membrane to run more efficiently and effectively, as well as prolonging the life of the RO membrane. RO machines prefer pre-softened water because they can very easily clean out the sodium that the softener introduces as opposed to dealing with all all that hardness on its own with no help. Too much hardness will quickly tax the RO membrane and shorten their life. But now, thanks to my new friend, the Hydrologic Stealth RO100, I now have, wait for it, zero PPMs, kaboom. I can scarcely believe it myself. I mean, this is the ideal starting point for hydroponics, my friends, pure H2O. I have an implausibly fresh and clean and empty Greyhound bus upon which to load my nutrients. Yeehaw! So let's take a closer look at my reverse osmosis water purification system. Say that five times fast. I've installed my Stealth 100 away from the glare of the grow lights as this can cause algae issues inside the machine. Now, Hydrologic makes a whole bunch of different size systems, but even this little puppy can produce up to 100 gallons a day of the good stuff, ultra pure H2O, and that's more than enough for a three or four light garden. It's worth pointing out that RO systems produce both ultra pure reverse osmosis water and wastewater. Here you can see the wastewater coming out of this black tubing, which goes directly into my sink drain, while the pure H2O comes out of this blue tube and collects in my reservoir. The wastewater is necessary to properly flush and divert the contaminants away from the membrane. Luckily, my Hydrologic Stealth RO100 is one of the most efficient ROs on the market. As long as you have 40 or over PSI water pressure, or 2.76 bar, and as you can see, I'm just about there, you can simply plug her in and go. No need for pumps or electricity. The system comes pretty much ready to go. I also found this handy float valve in the box, which I finally got around to installing so that the system automatically shuts down when my reservoir is full and I don't flood my basement. When mixing up nutrients with RO water, I first add a CalMag supplement to bring the PPMs up to between 100 and 300 before adding any base nutrients. How much CalMag you add depends on what stage of life your plants are in. The more mature they get, the more the need of CalMag becomes, and levels of 300 ppm or more are often used in the flowering stages. Small plants might only need 100 ppm or less. Now, if you sat there thinking, why is this guy going to all the trouble to remove all the calcium and magnesium from his hard water only to add it back? That's a really good question, and it really gets to the heart of the matter. Hard water contains calcium and magnesium in a form that isn't readily available to plants, whereas the calcium and magnesium in a CalMag supplement is chelated and super available. Calcium and magnesium carbonate are large molecules and tend to gloom up on the roots, locking out other essential elements. They take a while to break down and they need help either with microbial tea, fulvic and humic acids, or aminos to get them in a form that the plants can readily uptake. CalMag supplements, on the other hand, are absorbed right away. Some growers add a little tap water to their RO water to bring the calcium bicarbonate level up to between 30 and 50 ppm to minimize pH fluctuations when recirculating your nutrients. You'll find that your pH adjusters go a lot further using RO water. Hard water requires growers to add lots of phosphoric or nitric acid to achieve the desired pH, which can, in turn, cause nutrient ratios to fall out of whack. Using RO, I find that I don't need to add any adjusters at all when I mix up my nutrient solution. After your CalMag, add your base nutrients, any additives, and then test the pH. Don't bother testing the pH of the RO water. Your pH meter will become confused, and the pure RO water can actually cause damage to the probe, as well as fewer toxicity issues and more efficient feeding, other benefits of RO water include less frequent reservoir changeouts. After all, you're feeding your plants the minerals and the ratios that your nutrient manufacturer intended. Remember kids, those feed charts you follow religiously are all based on using RO water.
water. Okay, except for the hard water feed charts. But my point is, is that the nutrient manufacturers can't second guess what's in your water. Change your sediment filter at least every six months. The carbon filter's life expectancy really depends on the amount of chlorine and chloramines in your source water. The RO membrane lasts about a year on average, but it can last up to two years or more depending on your source water's PPMs and any stress caused by low or high pressure. Please take my advice and talk to your local hydro store about water purification. They'll no doubt be aware of any water quality issues in your area and can fix you up with a reverse osmosis machine that will meet your needs. Trust me, you'll wish you'd done it years ago. Okay, that'll do for now. Let me know your questions and comments in the box below. If you want to watch a step-by-step -step installation of a reverse osmosis machine, you can watch my other video here. Thanks for listening, staying with me, and please don't forget to subscribe to give me a boost of super pure reverse osmosis happiness. This is Everest, out.